a strange disturbance, Ben, Gwen, and Kevin visit Los Soledad to investigate the noise, and when they find it to be a strange creature that ages everything it touches, it starts to become a hassle to deal with. Meanwhile, they run into the time traveler Professor Paradox, who is also connected to this creature, with the timeline and the future at stake. Will Ben and their new ally Paradox be enough to save the day? Let's find out. Before we dive into the main story, of course we have to talk about its cold open. Just like Max out, they approach their opener very differently while also connecting to the general story. But this time, we're given a 1950s vibe, where the visuals are desaturated and you get this really bizarre sci-fi tone that generally works for this scene. But you know what else works for this scene? The star of this episode, Professor Paradox. Paradox is a very confident and brilliant character. Every time he's on screen, he radiates this powerful aura whenever he's around. Ah, well, you don't have to tell me twice. No, not you, the other one. Ah, that's a little awkward. I also love how he teases the team at the beginning of the episode. And if you didn't already know, Paradox is a direct reference to Doctor Who, which is pretty awesome. But the lore behind Paradox is something that makes it fresh and interesting enough to really stand out as his own character. From the beginning of the episode, we see that Paradox was working on a time experiment. But when he gets sucked inside the ripple, he finds himself stuck there for 100,000 years. He went from going insane to sane to learning all about how time and space works from just general knowledge. But that same timed experiment also causes the problem of the episode. Why? Why? Because a beast is sent 50 years into the present where they arrived at the abandoned military base Los Soledad. It turns out they're aging everything into dust, and the way this creature moves is so artistically brilliant. It kind of moves like how you adjust the space of a brush in an art program. Weird philosophy, I know, but instead of moving at super speed, we see multiple versions of the time creature moving around behind him when it's still in fact one person, not clones. Again, it's really clever with how they came up with this. But because a parallel future paradox mourns over the failure of stopping the time creature, this forces Ben, Gwen, and Kevin to get involved and assist Paradox with how to stop them. While Team Alien Force doesn't receive too much action in this episode, we do get to see Ben more involved with the story. This episode features the most aliens Ben has transformed into throughout all of Season 1, and he's the one who solves the mystery of what this time creature is generally doing. Because this time creature was using phone lines and trying to find help, it turns out the time beast was actually Paradox's assistant, Hugo, who was sucked into the time portal during the experiment. Again, I gotta give credit where the credit's due, because because even Paradox couldn't figure this out. Meanwhile, we get to know more about Kevin's life outside the team, like how he knew the strange disturbances and it reveals he goes racing with his friends outside La Soledad. He also throws parties, which makes me curious if Ben and Gwen were ever involved in any of these. But another highlight from Kevin is when he gets touched by the creature. Kevin ages 50 years, and we do get some good jokes out of this. You're nearsighted, arthritic, your reflexes are shot, and you're trying to unlock a cactus. Kevin's car is also affected by this too, but it's nothing Paradox can't fix. While Kevin is aged back to normal, Paradox gives him a new version of his car for helping save the day. The only issue is, Kevin's car can't come in contact with anything else from 1976, or it'll explode like antimatter. I wonder how that generally works. Does this include people specifically? I don't really know. The visuals also really stand out here. This episode is mostly taking place at Los Soledad during sunset, and while they're able to change which areas they're in, they're still within one setting, and I really like that. The animation is pretty great for its swift, but action pieces. And they also managed to play with the lighting in some areas too. This helps many scenes stand out, like during the time experiment. Overall, this is one of the best episodes from Ben's and Alien Force, and I can say certainly this is the best episode from season one. Though we still have three more episodes before we get to season two, this was still an entertaining watch that really manages to balance the action and comedy with the bizarre sci-fi tone. In fact, it almost feels like an episode from the classic series too. So no matter where you stand as a Ben 10 fan or a Doctor Who fan, I highly recommend you checking out this one. You won't be disappointed. We give Paradox a 10 out of 10. You are never driving my car again! True, 